three programs, including the IT program at North Arkansas College in North Central Arkansas, Harrison, Arkansas. Uh, this is my colleague and friend, Rick Williams, who is the director of IT services for the college. But for the last year and a half or so, he's also been helping run the academic networking IT program. And we are going to tell you about something we've been doing for the last year or so, trying to, well, not trying, but actually offering courses, networking courses remotely to a distant site. And we'll tell you how and why in a minute. I also want to introduce Eric Bude, who is uh, sitting in the audience. And this is Aaron up here teaching a class remotely. Aaron is our network administrator for the college, and he has also stepped in and is helping teach and, and run the program for us. So we're going to talk about remotely delivering a networking program to a distant site, and, but what we're doing should apply to any hands-on type program. So we'll be talking specifically about networking. Thank you. We'll be talking specifically about networking, but uh, hopefully you can take this and uh, what we're doing isn't really rocket science. It's fairly simple, but it's working pretty well. Well, why are we doing this? Um, in our state, we, we are in a small town of about 13,000 in a rural community, in a rural state, but we, are, we have the uh, local FedEx freight hub in our town. We are an hour and a half from the Northwest Arkansas Corridor, which is home to uh, Walmart and Tyson's, among others. There are really good jobs nearby. And we have heard from our local business and industry leadership team, our advisory committee, that they need workers. We know from state workforce reports, we know from labor market reports, that they need workers. So our college, we need to be graduating more networking IT students. But for a variety of reasons, location, uh, the culture of the area, our resources, students have a tough time getting to us. Our networking program, uh, if you want to become a networking technician at North Arkansas College, until very recently, you have to get yourself on campus during the day uh, be there all day and complete the courses and that is really hard for some people to do so we started trying to think about how we can improve access and we can get more graduates and how we can provide access specifically to our more rural even more rural in our town to our more rural residents and provide them with uh, high paying good jobs um, so that is really what led us to this, the need for more graduates. Uh, I've got a talking point up there that says that Arkansas has consistently ranked bottom, second from the last, in per capita income and also in educational attainment. And I sort of think those two might be a little bit related. So we need to get some more students out and graduated and able to uh, participate in some good jobs. We use Canvas to start LMS. Uh, which is nice because the Cisco Academy and the NetiCat is also can campus, uh, on campus. So we're able to export a lot of the material uh, from NetiCat into our own campus environment. Everything doesn't come across, but uh, a good portion of it does, and it makes it a little less, a little more seamless uh, than just having the students keep uh, giving them links. So anyway, the, the top left is uh, our campus environment. Uh, with our uh, CCNA 1 and Network Fundamentals class that we're getting ready to teach this fall. Uh, then you see the, uh, the Cisco NetiCAD uh, courses uh, from their side, so we can access their curriculum through ours, and we've got curriculum and stuff between those two. But right now, we're set up to where uh, we offer Network Security 1 uh, online, which is part of that program. Uh, we have some Microsoft operating system courses that are offered online as well and we're this so fall we're going to have a, a small cohort of uh, CCNA 1 or Network Fundamentals uh, students that are going to be totally online. We have a biomed degree uh, where it's going to be a completely online uh, degree and they needed a networking course so we are trying to 
leverage the Cisco uh, Academy course to fulfill that networking requirement they have. So this would be a, a challenge. Uh, there's not going to be much of a hands-on component on that one so because it's truly online, but we're, uh, I don't think they will be going on to Cisco so, uh, with the Cisco program, so we're going to be doing everything on virtualized in our simulation. Now, just to kind of switch over, we're going to show you our rooms that we have set up. This is on our home site. Uh, we have uh, the, the left side is from the front of the, or the actually both of them are the, the front views of, of the room. And you can see that it's a typical lab classroom. And uh, we have uh, several stations. We have uh, 20, 20, 20 stations uh, plus an instructor station. And the, uh, in the back, you see our regular network stacks. Uh, we have a TV in the back so the instructor can see the, the remote students. Um, and then and the, another interesting thing we have set up, and this is kind of Aaron and I's, or actually Aaron kind of came up with the idea, but we have a fake wall that we have set up so the students can practice wiring, uh, putting cable in a wall uh, so it swivels out so you get into it. We have three different uh, stud spaces in there that may have this, one may have insulation, one may have a fire block with a notch, and it gives them real world experience on how in the world you get wired down a wall and you have no idea what's behind the uh, So anyway, we've got that set up. And then we have the, uh, uh, the stacks in the back. And on the right side is a TV in the, uh, that also will show the students, uh, the, the, the students in the home side, the students at the remote side, so they can kind of have a little bit of an interaction. They can kind of get to know each other a little bit better. Now this is at the, at the rear of the room. Uh, pretty typical for a CCNA or Cisco uh, Network Academy. Uh, we have six different pods of equipment, three routers, three switches uh, per pod uh, on, on those racks. On the left side is all of our patch. Uh, so we, all the machines in the room are, are tied into this patch panel so that uh, if they want to use a console cable, they just patch it across. Or if they want to use a different uh, a network or connect to one of the switches, uh, they can patch into there. And each of these are also tied to patch panels on each of the, the racks here. So it's it's easy to connect from the machine. You don't have to have wires running all over the, the floor. And uh, uh, so it's, it, it works very, very well. And you're probably saying, how does this have to do with remote? We're not going to get to the same. And these are just a couple of our students. Now the, the remote site uh, over in our Carroll County Center, this is the front view of that classroom. And as you can see, it's a standard classroom. So we share this with other, other programs. Uh, there could be a math class in there, there could be an English class. So we have to be, have to kind of share that space and make it uh, kind of adaptable for, for all the different ones. And if you look at the back, the, where the yellow arrow is, <coughs> that is our mobile network cart. Uh, again, this is Aaron's uh, brainchild as well, but it's just a reduced uh, networking cart that we can put on the remote side, and it gives the students the access to do that some of those hands-on things. So as the students on the, the home side are working and, and plugging in all their equipment, they have, they can do the same thing at the remote side. We'll get about, talk about costs and what's involved in that in a little bit later. So they, again, they have the access, there's laptops that's provided for them so they can connect up to it. And then the rest of the material is all done uh, through, the, through the course. Uh, the green arrow will point to the, the rear camera. And the main reason why we have a rear camera in this site uh, is because we want the flexibility of the, having the instructor uh, given, given them the opportunity to be able to go to, to this site and teach from here. Uh, so it's important, I think, that we have the instructor maybe move, you know, not every week, uh, but every now and then to be able to go over to the remote side and get to know those students and then teach the ones back at the home side as well. So that's the reason why we put the camera in the back so they can do the, uh, the, the delivery from this location as well. The blue arrow is going to our, uh, it's, that's basically our whole room microphone and speaker. So it is, uh, to, picks up all the, the uh, audio uh, for that room. Uh, 
and we'll talk about some of the challenges that we have with that in a minute. But uh, that's the basic setup and the, uh, looking from the front. If you look from the rear, you'll see that we have another camera. This is the one that's uh, primarily used uh, whenever we're teaching from the home site. So we can see the students, we can interact with them, you know, we can see them if they raise their hand, uh, if they're here, if they, they can speak up and ask a question. Uh, and also the TV at the front also will show the home site students. So again, we're trying to get that, that interaction between the, the two groups as much as possible uh, whenever we're delivering these courses. And again, just another view for the, the, the microphone and the camera, the, uh, the uh, speaker is located within the room. Uh, but you'll notice that it has a projector and a screen. Uh, we do need projectors and screens on each of these rooms. <coughs> And this is basically what's going to be uh, the content that's going to be shown. So whatever the instructor is sharing on their Zoom session is what's going to be shown on that screen. Uh, so that is important for the, for the remote students as well as the, the home. And again, if you have any questions at all during the time. Yes? So is the instructor shown on the same screen? Because I see you have a TV there too. The, the instructor can be seen on the TV. That would be for the camera. And if they're sharing content, then that's what shows up on the projector. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to make this informal as we can. So if you have questions at any time, please let us know. Yes? All right. Can you adjust the camera? Can you move it yeah. yeah. We actually have a video coming up here in a little bit that shows you just how detailed that you can, how much you can zoom in and see. All right. And then, of course, I've already talked about the TV in the front. That's what will show the, the, the students and the instructor can change that camera to, to show himself or herself uh, on that screen as well. All right. Uh, but also some of the different support uh, ways we can do this remote delivery. Is of course, we talked about lab assistance already. Uh, we use the simulation software like Packet Tracer, for example, for the Cisco courses. So that is, that's huge uh, because there are some things that's just not it's going to be too difficult to try to do uh, with hands-on. We don't have enough equipment or different things. So we use Packet Tracer quite heavily uh, in, that, in that program. We also we use virtual machines. So we'll have students set up. Uh, we use VirtualBox and VMware Workstation uh, for different types of virtual machines, depending on the course. Um, for example, with network security, we use all kinds of virtual machines for those uh, to, to, so they can work with that so it's a protected environment and not actually out. <coughs> on the network. Uh, we're also looking at, and we've not used this, but virtual labs, uh, but that is also an option. Uh, we know that the, some of the net labs, the MEG labs, uh, are, are available uh, for, for different things. We are not using it yet, but we are very interested in looking at that. And also another thing we do that Zoom allows us to do is to record all of our lectures. So uh, after, as we do our lecture, we record the entire thing and then we put it out on our campus environment so the students can then go back out and, and look at it and make sure that they didn't miss anything. All right, the cost. Now all this is assuming that you've already got the basic setup in place uh, with like an instructor station, projector, screen, all of that. Uh, but TVs and I tell you, just one thing about having Eric on board with this is he is uh, he's a well down for, for deals. Um, but we can, we've been getting TVs, including them out for about $300 each, and that's what a 55 inch? 55 inch 4K. So uh, we've been getting some good deals there. And I was going to ask, is, is that about the right size for a TV? It depends on the size of the room. Definitely depends on the size of the room. But uh, for our case, 55 works pretty well. 65 is also a pretty good option. That You're not getting into the, the high cost for the TVs. If, because 65 is still reasonable. Past that, it gets the prices just skyrocketing. Our rooms are approximately 30 by 30, and that size TV is sufficient. Uh, if you go into larger rooms, you definitely want to see it though. Yeah. Now, I did put a little disclaimer here. You might have to do some video switching or distribution amps, you know, how many TVs you put in. So, if you want to mimic, you know, front to back TVs, you want to put a uh, distribution out, so you're just sending a signal to, to, to both uh, TVs and down the, the distance as well. You may have different types of uh, cabling and, and, and amplifiers. Uh, we also, the inside is the remote control software that we briefly touched on. The cost on that is, initial cost is $30 for a PC. 
but then after that it's quite reasonable. It's only $66 per lab. Uh, so that is a, a pretty good investment uh, for, for at least for us. Zoom, uh, the, the cost for that for 20 hosts, which means these are 20 people that can actually have an account that can start a meeting. Uh, this is $1,800 for 20, and that's per year. In our scenario, we, uh, we are only using one host. Yeah. That is, just me as a presenter. So if you had two teachers teaching one class, you need one host, or you need two hosts? Two teachers teaching one class. Yeah. So you just need the one if you're just going from the same. Same station. Same station. Yeah. Same. At the same, same time? time. You're talking at the same time? Right? No, 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 they alternate. Oh, they, oh, oh. They, they have expertise in this section, they have expertise in this section, so. Zoom recommends that you have each one. Well, if, if, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is it per login? Is it, is it per login? Per login. So that teacher station essentially per in that setup room would have that one on. Correct. Now, also, there is a free version of Zoom, uh, but it's limited to, I think, 45 minutes. So if you go to your class goes 45 minutes, it, it stops it, it cuts it off. So one host can reach out to how many students? <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, yeah. It's not been an issue for us yet. I think it's a hundred. I think it's it, it showed a hundred on their packages. Yeah, here. I believe it's a hundred or a hundred remotes. I, I think if you're a blackboard school with a new version, some point oh, you've got to collaborate yeah. already. Yes. So you may already have something at your institution. That's what I'm thinking. I'd use collaborate because we're already U of A school, so Arkansas. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so. Uh, um, we could just deal this dollars yeah. on collaborate. Exactly. Our concern is the sound and the camera quality. Right. And we've had pretty good luck with the sound and camera quality so far. Like, well, no, not so much the sound. Uh, but anyway, and we'll get into the sound. The, that's one of our challenges. Uh, but the camera mic speaker kit, we use the Aver <coughs> camera speaker kit. Uh, it's the, it's the 820. The 820 plus VC 820 500 plus, uh, but it runs for that package is about 900 dollars uh, for the camera, cables, and the uh, the microphone and speaker. Now the remote side, we talked a little bit about the, the mobile cart, uh, the, the networking cart. Uh, this is the total cost, at least that what we kind of uh, paid it was 3600 dollars. You can kind of see the, the breakdown of that, where you can save some money. Is the laptops. We repurposed laptops. So, being kind of our foot in both sides of IT services, we had access to laptops that were uh, the staff may have turned in or whatever. So, we were just using, reusing of the older laptops that uh, may not have been appropriate for an office anymore, but it would work perfectly for this one. Uh, so, um, that is our, our mobile cart. Um, this has worked quite well, it's been quite stable. How many students would that support? Well, we can. We have two laptops on it right now. I think we're going to three. Uh, but you can, you know, a lot of these are, are working. They work in teams and work together. Uh, so we can have about uh, three different connections at the same time uh, with this with the three laptops. All right, the challenges. Of course, if any time you're doing with remote, but it's online, remote delivery. How do you keep everybody engaged? Um, because sometimes it's easy, since they're on a little monitor uh, on the back, sometimes it's, it's, it takes a lot of training to, I mean, it's okay. It takes a lot of training for the instructor to keep an eye on that monitor to see if there's questions or see if they're falling asleep or whatever. Uh, so keeping them engaged is a big one. Uh, also that qualified lab help is what we talked about. Uh, like I said, we had to just try all different kinds of things uh, this last year. Uh, to, to make sure we had somebody that, that could, could do those things and help those students in that area. Logistics, you know, we we're 40 something miles away, you know, if we need supplies, you know, supplies would have to get in the car and ride them over there, so sometimes that can be a, a problem. And, uh, you know, if there's a, an issue, you know, if we have to do troubleshooting, thankfully we had some really good students. Um, they could actually work through and help troubleshoot the, the problems for us, but there could be situations where we have equipment just will not work right, and we may have to, to actually visit the site to do that. So troubleshooting and updating is an issue. Room scheduling, again, like I said, we share that remote side with other programs. So scheduling that, make sure we're, that everything meets at the same time as at the home site can be, can be an issue. 
and also connectivity and power. Uh, if that remote site goes dark or if the uh, loses internet connection or whatever, it impacts the, the class. Um, now we can still continue on with the home, we can record the lectures, do those different types of things, but, uh, but they are just, they, they cannot, cannot connect. So that is also another risk for internet access. And when you live in rural Arkansas in the mountains with you know, thunderstorms and tornadoes and floods and everything else that happens, power outage is not, you know, it's not a, an if, it's a win. So uh, we have to go with that as well. Something I really like about NSF ATE is that well, when you are uh, submitting a proposal, they're not expecting you necessarily to affect 100 students the first year. They are good with uh, making inc incremental changes. So we actually had we had two students enrolled in remote courses at the Carroll County Center um, at the start of the semester. Uh, Aaron actually ended up with three students because a student who was coming to uh, home site decided the remote site was closer. So uh, two students enrolled in the A plus sequence, two students enrolled in the CCNA sequence, uh, moving up to three of them. And all three of those students completed the coursework. One completed a technical certificate. Uh, one is re-enrolled for the fall. And uh, I'm not sure what has happened with the third one. I think he just hasn't re-enrolled yet. Um, so we, we had very good success with that. Do either of you know uh, what happened with the online success rate? I'm sorry, I didn't think to look at that. Um, we've not offered any of these online. Well, the, the network security we offered online, and I think I only had two that did not. Out of how many? Out of 14, 15. Okay. Okay. So far, uh, very good. We have uh, two new students enrolled so far for the fall in the CCNA 1 and 2. Um, still have a month till classes start. One of our biggest issues is marketing and recruiting. Our enrollment is going down. Uh, there are more jobs than you can shake a stick at in our community right now. So uh, we're struggling across the institution with enrollment. And next steps, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we'd like to be offering multiple cohorts at multiple times in multiple locations. This was uh, one small step, but uh, what we hope to do within the next couple of years is to be uh, remote delivering coursework to workplaces, uh, either a full degree or to get existing workers up to speed in some areas to our local high schools and to some other sites. And uh, also, the audio has been mentioned several times. Yeah. This is a, a picture of one of our full-fledged Zoom rooms. You can't really tell, but if you see it, look in the ceiling, there are several microphones that, that are dangling down, which that actually kind of that helps with the audio somewhat. Uh, but this one has multiple cameras, multiple screens, uh, it has a control pad uh, that, that you can use to, to select the different things and control the different components of that zoom room. So, um, if we, do we need all of that for some of these? Probably not. We can probably get by with the zoom light rooms, but this does have the enhanced capability. What's the cost difference? Quite a lot. Uh, <laughs> Quite a this, lot. this zoom room was approximately $14,000. Okay. Yeah. Before we put the other one up, you know, we saw that for about $5,500. So, and a lot of it's the Zoom license is quite a bit more, the, and all those, also the, the switch gear, and the different components much higher. 14,000 does not include the Zoom license. No, that's right, it was 14,000. One thing that we have done, that Aaron's done, is a USB headset microphone for the instructor. That helps for the instructor, but it all takes away the student comments. So, that's the downside of that. So, the other side can hear the instructor much better, but they cannot hear what the students on the side. Well, I know that we're about out of time. Really appreciate you being here. And if you have any other questions since we are out of time, please come up and we'd love to talk with you. Thanks for being here.